we all have low energy, feelings of burnout, or bad mental or physical health days. Whether this is something you struggle with every once in a while, or if this is something that is more of a serious issue for you, I think most of us can relate in some type of way. Just for a little bit of context, I myself am neurodivergent. I've gone through struggles of mental health pretty much since I've been a teenager, which was a long time ago. <laughs> And pretty much over that entire period of time, I've almost always used some type of planner, bullet journal, something like that. And over time, I've tried to really perfect how I use my planner whenever I am in a bout of bad mental health or low energy. I just want to be very clear that I never want to tell people that they have to use their planner or journal during times where it might be hard for them. And if your planner is a source of stress for you during this time, then I would definitely recommend you to not use it for a little bit. I know you might want to put that pressure on yourself. You don't want to have empty pages, but actually I don't remember where I read it. It might actually have been on the Hobonichi website, but I read somewhere that blank pages can actually tell their own story in a way. And I firmly believe in that. However, if you're like me, using your planner on a daily basis can also be a source of happiness and it can help you anchor yourself and feel grounded in that way. So it can also, depending on the type of person that you are, help your mental health, or at least make you feel like the days aren't passing you by in a blur. I'm not a therapist and this is definitely not meant to replace therapy in any way. These are just my tried and true methods for how I use my planner to benefit myself during times of low mental health, some of which I have learned about in therapy and that I just wanna share with you today. My name is Lindsay, I make videos about planning and journaling, and if you're interested in that sort of thing, consider subscribing. Everything that I use in this video will be linked in the description box down below if you're curious about any products. And yeah, let's get into the tips. So tip number one is called the done list. The done list is, as the name suggests, the opposite of a to-do list. I like to switch to this method when I go through a bout of bad mental health. And when that happens, my regular to-do list starts to overwhelm me and thus it is no longer serving me. So I switch to a done list. It helps me not to fixate on the things I didn't get done and instead helps me to celebrate my progress and to help me shift my perception just a little bit. So this is what a done list, you know, might look like. Now, obviously, depending on what you're struggling with and what your days look like, this can be very different person to person. I'm currently working pretty hard in therapy, but also just personally to not connect my worth as a person to my productivity. Plus I struggle with being productive during hard mental health days anyways. So my done lists will look something like this usually, where I try to focus more on self care. So like this one says, I took a shower, I brushed my teeth, I drank water and I called a friend. So I took care of some of my physical hygiene. I did something good for my physical health, drinking water. And instead of being alone and kind of shutting myself off of the world, I sort of reached out and called a friend. These are all things that can be accomplishments if you do struggle with your mental health. Now, if you struggle really bad with taking care of yourself in days like these, there's no shame in that. I've been there. You know, your list might look a lot smaller. It just might be you got out of bed and you ate a piece of fruit. Or it might just be I got out of bed. Or it might just be... I don't know. I drink water. You know, it could be one thing. But I promise you, even in your worst of days, there's one thing you could write down. And I also know that some of us might really struggle with our mental health or physical health or burnout or whatever it is you struggle with. But we also have to work. We have to pay the bills. And it's not an option to stay home. And in that sense, your done list might be work related. So you could have answered emails, had meetings, worked on progress XYZ. I just kind of wrote that down because everybody's work is going to be different. And you had a conversation with your boss about a project review, something like that. And then even if you weren't as productive as you might have been, usually you can see you still got a lot done and it can make you feel good about yourself and accomplished. And instead of looking at a to-do list that is almost completely unfinished, you're looking at a list of things that you did get done. The next tip I want to talk about is called the GLAD method. The GLAD method is a method I learned about in therapy a few years ago, and now it is something that I like to refer back to when I want to journal, but I don't really know what I want to journal about, or my mind is just in a really dark place, and coming up with something to write about is just a lot. 
Or if you struggle with, let's say, depression, writing freeform can kind of turn into ruminating. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with writing out your feelings, but it can very easily turn into ruminating and you can just feel worse after writing, which is not something that we want. So the GLAD method helps me with that. The GLAD method is an acronym and it stands for gratitude, the G for gratitude. I think a lot of us have experience with writing a gratitude journal or writing something that we're grateful for every single day. And this can be something incredibly basic or small. I have written some examples here. For example, I wrote one time, I'm grateful for my fan in this heat wave. Another time I wrote, I'm grateful for my comfy couch where I took a nap today. Or it can be something much bigger. So this is an example I came up with. I'm grateful my child did something they loved today and I got to hear them laugh. Gratitude can be so small or so big and there's always something to be grateful for and focusing on something like that can really help you kind of change your perception in some way. The next letter in the GLAD acronym is the L, the L for learning or learned. And this can be something that you learned about yourself, some sort of insight or wisdom, or just a fun fact that you learned that day or something interesting about another person. Here's some other examples. These are all examples I think I've used. The Spice Girls were originally a group called Touch, which I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, what if everything works out is a great anti-anxiety mantra if you're like me and you struggle with what I call doom thinking or, you know, a fatalistic view of life and you're always kind of worrying that things go wrong. Asking yourself, well, what if everything works out can be super powerful. Husband likes sriracha, is that how you say it? In his tomato soup, but I prefer plain. It could be anything. Something so small can be something that you learn about yourself or another person. The next letter in the GLAD acronym is the A for accomplishments. An accomplishment, again, does not have to be big. It can be an ordinary act of self-care that you've struggled with because you've had low energy or bad mental health. In fact, I think the done list is kind of the accomplishment reimagined. And if you would want to do both in one day, you could definitely use things from your done list in your accomplishment section. So for example, um, an accomplishment could be, I wanted to get takeout, but cooked for myself instead. I struggled to take care of basic hygiene today, but managed to shower and brush my teeth. I got a compliment at work about a recent project and that's all I had. Now we have one letter left in the GLAD method and that is the D for delight. The D for delight is really just one thing that touched you positively in that day. I find this one sometimes really hard when I do struggle with mental health to find some type of joy in the day. But personally, I also think this one is one of the most important. Maybe it's something in nature that you thought was really beautiful. Like here I wrote down, I saw a really beautiful mushroom in the forest. I took a pic on my phone or something that happened at work. It was my co-worker's birthday and she brought home a cake to work. It was delicious. Maybe you had a lovely interaction with somebody, had a nice chat with my neighbor today and she seems like a lovely person. Or maybe it's a fun fact that is kind of like what you learned, like the L in GLAD, but this one really made you happy and made you smile in some way. Like I wrote an example, otters hold hands in the water while they sleep so they don't drift away from each other, which I just think is such a cute fun fact. <laughs> or something really small that happened, like I tried a new shampoo and it made my hair really soft. Again, just showing you some examples because that personally always really helps me whenever I try to look in a method or something like this to see what other people would write down. The next tip I wanna talk about is focusing on your health and temporarily tracking things that you don't normally track. Now, I know a lot of us in the planner community do track some things like some habits. A lot of us track our sleep. Personally, I always track my sleep in the weekly section of the Hobonichi Cousin. Here's an example of a couple weeks. You can see this last week, I did not sleep so well. <laughs> I'm doing a one month update, by the way, about using the Hobonichi Cousin at the beginning of October. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing. But what I mean with this tip is to really kind of go above and beyond with tracking. Personally, I think it's a lot of work to track a lot of habits. Um, health related stuff and to journal and just plan your regular day. So this is not something that I personally would recommend to do all the time unless you have the energy and resources to do that. But whenever I do have bad mental health, especially if I feel like I feel different than I usually do, if that makes sense, it can almost make me feel a sense of purpose, like I'm doing something to help my mental health and it can make me feel ever so slightly less helpless in that regard. I feel like 
I'm actually doing something instead of just sitting there with my bad mental health, if that makes sense. I would personally recommend if you do decide to track some stuff, to focus on your physical and mental health in one category and then focus on uh, habits that influence it in another category. So some things that you could track that are health related are your mood, your anxiety, if you struggle with mania, how manic you are on a scale of one to 10, your physical pain levels. I have a friend who has fibromyalgia and she tracks her pain levels. Sometimes if it's a really bad flare up, you can track your bowel movements. I have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So that is something that I might do and a trigger tracker. Obviously, if you are struggling from bad mental health, if it is worse than it is usually, you might have different or you react more strongly to triggers. And I think tracking that would be very helpful. And then some habits that influence it. It could be your workouts, what you eat and how much you eat, your sleep, the money you spent, routines, and your occasional medicine use. So for example, if I eat takeout four days in a row, I'm just saying something, um, my insides would melt because I have IBS. <laughs> but also if I spent more money than I might have budgeted for at any given point, that might give me anxiety or give me a negative mood or a positive mood if it's something that I really wanted. <laughs> your occasional med use, if you use a medicine for anxiety flare-ups or panic attacks, like I have IBS and I sometimes, if I have a bad flare-up, use medicine for that. And uh, I do track that on my daily pages. Actually, let me show you. So for example, this is my daily page from yesterday. So here I tracked what I took for my IBS and then I also had three drops of CBD which I don't know if I can say on YouTube the entire thing. <laughs> but um, so that is what I took for my anxiety that day. And I just kind of track on a daily basis, like what I take. Routines, I think are helpful to track, especially if you have a change in routines. Like maybe you have a different work schedule that week, or maybe if you struggle with changes in your week, it gives you anxiety. Just some examples. And I personally feel like this is a great thing to do, even temporarily, if you do happen to be in therapy. I know it's not accessible to everybody, believe me, I've been there. But if you do happen to be in therapy, it can be super helpful to talk about these patterns with your therapist or your doctor, where otherwise they may not have been something you noticed. Plus it helps you to feel a little bit more in tune with how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know it can be scary to kind of track stuff that you are struggling with. Like when I first started tracking my mood, I was in a really, really low mood and it was just depressing to track. But in the end, I was really glad I did it. And I saw it as kind of an act of self-care in that way. It helped me also to not, I guess, lie to myself that I was doing better than I really was. The last thing I want to talk about is scaling back on decorating and embracing imperfect spreads. On this channel, I'm actually a massive advocate for being an imperfect planner. I know a lot of us enjoy looking at those beautiful planner spreads on the internet. I do too, and there is nothing bad about people that plan in that perfect way, that decorate perfectly, um, and I have perfect hand lettering and perfect handwriting and all that stuff. I enjoy watching those too. I think it looks super satisfying. But for me on a day-to-day -day basis, if I were to use my planner like that, it would give me so much stress and anxiety and it would not serve me in a good way. Like I'm not against decorating. As you can see, I've decorated pretty much almost every single page in this um, in some type of way, but it's definitely not perfect. Actually on this page, I didn't use any decoration at all unless... I guess this lettering counts a little bit, but that's it. Um, because I was just not feeling it, which is fine. Now, if you don't decorate, this will not apply to you. Or if decorating is something that really gives you energy and it is like one of your main hobbies, like don't listen to me, go for it. Don't let me tell you what to do. But if you're one of those people that can get stressed out because you feel like you have to have a perfect cute planner, do perfect lettering, and that can give you kind of a mental block in general, I would highly, highly recommend you to just kind of scale back to that and just use your planner functionally, especially with pre-decorating. Like you can always decorate afterwards. I might go back to these pages later and just add like some stickers to the bottom or some washi just because why not if I'm bored and I'm watching a YouTube video or something. But yeah, I really feel like there's a benefit to not decorating or pre not pre-decorating at least when I'm not mentally doing super well. 
to not put pressure on yourself to have a perfect planner, to have a beautiful planner, and instead have a planner that serves you, that you love using because of what it gives you instead of the way that it looks. Your planner or journal is a tool first, a tool to feel better, to accommodate yourself and to gain insight in whatever you're struggling with, which is super important. Decorating is really something that I think should come second, unless decorating itself is like functional for you and decoration is something that makes you use your planner in the first place. Maybe you're super artsy and not decorating your planner would make you super depressed in the first place, which is not what we want. This was a little bit of a vulnerable video to make, so I hope I came off the right way and you got some type of value out of it. I try to be inclusive in my language because I know a lot of people struggle with a lot of different things. If there's something that you do specifically in your planner or journal that I didn't mention that is specific to I guess, improving or helping your mental health. Don't hesitate to mention it in the comments down below. So hopefully this video and the comments together can be a resource for other people altogether. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye.